Francisco, one of the things that uh, I think is detrimental to believers and even theologians is when they try to use science to prove or even to strongly demonstrate the existence of their God. This is a subject you've dealt with for much of your career. Yes, because usually what uh, um, these people of faith or preachers do is to uh, put God in the gaps of knowledge, is the, what is sometimes called the gods of the gaps. <laughs> uh, because something is not known, then it's attributed to God. And unfortunately, the history tells us, the history of the world and the history of science, that gaps very often get filled as time goes by. Then they have and to then, take God exactly. out and put him in a new gap. Exactly. And, <laughs> and um, you know, one of the current movements which is being uh, pursued very strongly by some people in the United States, but also in other countries, is this idea of intelligent design, that <coughs> organisms are so complex, and the, the complexity of their parts, to have so many parts that they can only the, the, the organ or the function can only occur if all the parts are together at the same time. And then they use examples. The a person who is the main proponent among scientists of intelligent design as he has used three particular examples. And all the three examples now are perfectly understood as how the components came one at a time by the evolutionary process. It is a tremendous mistake to try to prove the existence of God on the basis of knowledge that we don't have or the ignorance that we have. You know, I was very pleased when a few months ago a religious publisher asked me to write a book about evolution and intelligent design because he knew that I'm very sympathetic about religious beliefs and at the same time I'm bona fide <laughs> evolutionist scientist <laughs> and, and I have published a book. It's uh, called Darwin and Intelligent Design and I make a number of points there, and one of them is that actually organisms are not intelligent designed. They are very incompetently designed, <laughs> and that uh, blaming God for that amounts to blasphemy. The number of defects that organisms have, it's not just that they are not perfect, it's that they are dysfunctional. And the human jaw is a very well-known example that th we have too many teeth for the size of our jaw. We understand why that happened in evolution. As our brain was growing, the jaw had to become smaller. <laughs> and then the teeth were already becoming smaller as well, but they go behind. So imagine an engineer who would have designed the human jaw so that the teeth don't fit, <laughs> the, the, all of them, so you have to remove the wisdom teeth and the other, straighten the other ones, that engineer would be fired and <laughs> blaming God for that or for designing the birth canal of humans, which is not large enough for the mother to give easily birth to the child, to the head of the child. And so millions of children have died in the history of mankind and millions of women because of the defective design. And it's not only uh, dysfunctional designs, it's also cruelties. I mean, who would have designed parasites which only existence is by destroying other organisms, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> that seems to be very cruel. Now, biology can explain that as a result of natural processes. That's why many theologians are, were so very happy with Darwin. Some of them reacted very negatively as they reacted negatively, the physicists, after the, the, to the discoveries of Galileo. But the discoveries of Galileo and Newton explain where there are earthquakes and where there are storms and lightning. They don't have to be attributed to God punishing the, the <laughs> world. In the same way, Darwin made possible to explain these dysfunctionalities and cruelties as the result of natural processes without having to attribute them uh, to the direct creation by God. So really a, an enlightened view of science, even by the most fervent believer or theologian, would see in science, whether in the physical sciences or in the biological sciences, really a, an affirmation of their belief if they looked at it properly. Yeah, an affirmation in the sense that knowledge is all something good in, uh, by almost any measure. 
and for, f therefore science, scientific knowledge can be seen as an expression of the goodness of God in the world. And, and, to, and to see the complexity of how God works right. is, is really cr making them understand a different kind of God than maybe their very simplistic yeah. God was originally in, yes. in their minds. That's right. Again, uh, primitive expressions of religion mm. were considerably uh, simpler, more considerably more primitive than now because the understanding of the world outside was so limited. But now in biology, we have such a view of the complexity of life, the beauty of life, the richness of life. Now, science gives us scientific knowledge does not say anything about beauty, about richness, <laughs> but for the religious believer, that's one way to see the presence of God in the world. 